Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with the unit's November State of the Unit address. All right, so I just wanted to, if you haven't ever watched a State of the Unit address, you need to start watching these. These come out monthly, close to the start of the month, and they tell you about what happened last month, what's getting ready to come out in the next month, anything, any news that you should know about, any changes in the squadron, blah, 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 things like that, right? Okay, so... <clears throat> We had a change, a huge change with our voice communication tool. What we're using now is Discord, right? You'll see that we've got a Discord server located right over here, and we've got uh, on our banner it says Discord instead of TeamSpeak, and over here it has Discord instead of TeamSpeak. That's because. Um, <clears throat> Pretty much everybody in the world, uh, in the gaming communities, are switching to Discord uh, for a couple of different really good reasons. One, it uses less resources on your computer. Uh, it also is has available a mobile app that you can put on your phone so that uh, when you when someone logs into Discord or jumps on Discord, you can actually see that uh, you can get a notification on your phone. And you can jump on and like join them if you've been looking for a game or something like that. Okay, so, and the most important thing is it's free. Okay, so as you know, we've been paying about $10 a month for TeamSpeak, and that's going to stop. The squadron will not have to put any money into TeamSpeak. That is a thing of the past. Um, Discord might not be as powerful. I, won't, I don't have as many tools available to me as a squadron uh, leader for uh, Discord that I did in TeamSpeak, but that doesn't matter. We can all get together. We can talk. We can chat. We have voice chat. We have text chat. I mean, hell, you can even use your phone and talk to people that are in Discord. Uh, so that's that's just great right there. And plus, it uses a lot less resources uh, when... And knowing that we're playing Star Citizen, which is a very heavily resource-driven game, uh, it's better to use as the, little, the least amount of resources as possible to dedicate as much to the game as possible. So, so that's a big change, Discord. Um, now, because we switched to Discord, we're using the mobile app that comes with Discord. But I want to say that uh, Rogue X really stepped forward and wanted to set up a mobile app. I think he's going to use WhatsApp, but he was going to set up a mobile app and he was pushing forward with that. Um, and right about the same time, we made the decision to switch to Discord. So when we switched to Discord, it basically means he didn't have to set up his mobile app. <coughs> I think he already did set it up, but we're not going to use it. We don't need to use it. He can close it down. Uh, but thanks, Rogue, because... That shows me that you got a little bit of initiative and that you were helping out the squadron and really do appreciate that. Okay, now moving on. Now, if you notice that in the forums, uh, we've got GZ1, or is it Raven1010, he created um, some forum signatures that anyone and everyone can use. Uh, he was, he was uh, I guess, busy with his his editing software and program or whatever and made up a bunch of these forum signatures. If you're on the Star Citizen forums, if you're on the engine forums or any other forums, you know, please use those signatures. That way, uh, not only do they advertise our squadron, they have a link to our website and anybody that um, can basically you you are telling them where you're from, right? What squad? So basically, you're taking pride in your squadron. Do that. Okay. So yeah, use those. There's an alternative. I made my own for myself, but if you want to use some of those that are used by Rogue, uh, or not Rogue, uh, Raven 1010, do so. I mean, he makes they're they're looking good, and if you like them, take them, use it. You know, if you want to make your own, make your own. But uh, I think he did a really good job. I appreciate him doing that for us. And uh, now let's talk about uh, what else? What else? Um, 
Oh yeah, there was uh, just recently we had the CitizenCon, right? CitizenCon showed off uh, the PlanetSide demo, which was they they labeled it as Homestead. <coughs> They weren't talking about players creating a homestead, like a like a base of operations or anything like that. That's not what it was about. It was about a guy taking a mission on a planet. And the sand people had taken a crashed javelin and turned it into their homestead, right? And this guy had to find the javelin, find the distress beacon, um, he wasn't actually rescuing anybody or anything. I don't even know why he was doing this. But it was just showing off the planet. It was showing the Ursa rover. It showed the dragonfly. It showed the Aquila. Uh, some first-person combat. It showed weather effects and sound and lighting. And the planet, procedural tech, the plants snow, the biomes, or I could list could go on. And it's all done in this like 30 minute um, 30 minute demo. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, watch it. Okay? Watch the planet planetary demo. It's super awesome. Okay, and then um, <clears throat> what else? He, they talked about Squadron 42 and how it's not coming out anytime soon. And they talked about 2.6, 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. And 4.0, and they talked about all. They gave all the slides of when, uh, or not when, but what should be released in each of those patches. Now that's subject to change. We all know that, right? So, uh, but 4.0 is supposed to be when they're going to release jump points. Uh, 3.0 is when they're going to release the Stanton system, and we'll be able to fly around and go from planet to planet. We'll be able to land on the planets, walk around the planets. Are they going to be done with the planets? No, they're still going to be working on them. And <clears throat> will they have every single base station or or uh, mission input on when 3.0 comes out? No. Because each of the ones, the 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, they said they were going to add missions you know, each each patch. And he also said any time between two to three months months between those patches. Um, yeah, so so if that's the case, you can expect to see 4.0 maybe 2017, December, maybe early 2018. I don't know. We'll we'll see. That's when jump points will become available and we'll be able to go from planet to system to system. Okay, and our jump drive will actually start working. But throughout each of those patches, they're going to slowly start releasing different professional jobs. And to me, it's they're not releasing jobs. They don't release jobs. What they're releasing is the mechanics to perform certain tasks. That's what it is. And then you define your job. Yeah, they don't release the job. They re release, if, they, if they're going, to, like in 3.0, we're supposed to have cargo. If you can carry cargo from point A to point B, that's a mechanic. If you decide to carry cargo, then it's a job. Or if you take a mission that requires you to carry cargo, then that's a job. So don't don't think of it as professions. I don't think they're releasing professions. They're releasing the tools to be able to perform professions. Yes, they're going to have salvage, salvage mechanic, how to salvage. Then they're going to have farming. You know, how to farm and what benefit does that give you? Who knows, you know? Um, and then they're going to have um, repair, you know, and a bunch of others, you know. Uh, and that's all cool. But the most important thing is, more than anything else, in my opinion, more, more than even 3.0 is 2.6. 2.6, which is supposed to be the next patch, it's going to go to the PTU any day now. Now that the free fly is over, the free fly is was over yesterday. So now that the free fly is over, they're going to they're going to put out 2.6 to the PTU any day now. I don't I can't tell you when or what, but it has two huge things, two huge things in 2.6 
that is going to affect our squadron. Our squadron. So if if you are if you haven't been playing, that's fine. But when 2.6 comes out, you need to play in 2.6. We need to team up. We need to do some of these tasks, uh, some of these new mechanics in 2.6 so that we can work out the team dynamic. And one of the things is Star Marine. Star Marine is going to be out in 2.6, and that is going to give us our armor. It's going to give us a bunch of weapons, grenades, shields. It's going to give us opponents in first person, and it's going to be a lot like Arena Commander was two years ago when we were jumping into Arena Commander over and over and over and over and over, and we pounded Arena Commander into our head. And guess what that did? It made us good dogfighters. But guess what? Dogfighting is only half the story. We're going to have to be able to get out, get, our, get out of our ships once in a while and actually physically, manually take over a station or something like that. We have to do that. So we have to pound this first person into ourselves. And so we, I want to form up teams and go into these 12v12 or even 4v4 missions uh, and maybe as soon as they come out with some AI, we're going to definitely pound the AI into the dirt, too. But we're going to do the player stuff, and we're going to do control, we're going to do deathmatch, we're going to do it all until we get comfortable with working together. And then we'll come up with some strategies and tactics based on the way the weapons work and the way the mechanics in Star Marine works. Okay, so 2.6. Having armor, having versatile weapons, the armors actually affect your speed and your protection and your visibility, all that stuff is important. We, right now we don't have any of that. Right now everybody is naked no matter where, wh what you're wearing and you have complete visibility and you have complete speed whether you're wearing heavy armor or light armor, it doesn't matter. All the weapons don't even do the proper amount of damage. Hit boxes are too big, so the bullet can fly by your head and you're considered to be killed or hit in the head. So hit boxes are wrong. Uh, also, the female model is coming out, and the female model's hit boxes. This is what I thought was weird. They said that the hit boxes on the female extend on purpose outside of the body. So the hitbox might be here, so when the bullet or laser flies by, it's going to cause damage to the arm. Uh, the reason why they don't want to give an advantage to a smaller frame person that's harder to hit, but because that because what's going to happen is if that's the case, if the smaller body gives you some kind of an advantage, then everybody's going to be playing that body style. I'm sure you've played an MMO where there are people, like City Heroes, there was, there was bunches of people that did this, that would play ridiculously small people. They would play pixies or whatever, and it was impossible to click on them when they were inside of a crowd, a mob, right? So you're trying to click on them, you can't. And so, yeah, so people did that in MMOs, and they're trying to avoid that. They don't want you to pick the smallest possible person, a female character, so that you get some kind of advantage. So what they're doing is, and what this is my understanding is, they're going to make the hitboxes the exact same size no matter what body style or size you have. So if you're like this really big dude, your hitbox might be smaller than what you really are, right? And if you're this really small girl, your hitbox is going to be bigger than you, so you can get hit even if they, like, you think you're hiding behind a wall, but really your hitbox is extending out past the wall, and boom, you're going to get hit. So, bat on you guys that are playing girly, girly characters, you know. Uh, okay, so you got that 2.6, but then the next big change in 2.6 is the flight control scheme. The way your ship turns, the way it skids, the way it flies fast or slow, the space combat maneuvering versus fighting in cruise mode all the time. There's this phenomenon going on right now where people are in cruise mode 100% of the time. 
they go to cruise mode and they fly the universe right and then when they get into a dogfight they don't switch to space combat maneuvering they just lower their throttle they lower their throttle down to 50 percent that's too fast 25 percent that's space combat maneuvering speed or maybe 10 percent or wherever they want to do it but their ship stays in cruise mode so the ship is in cruise mode and it's when you start getting slow like 10%, 15% throttle, your ship will turn exactly like it does in space combat maneuvering. They're trying to fix that. What they want to do is keep your turning ability to zero when you're in cruise mode. That's what I would do. That's the way I would fix it. Making people switch to space combat maneuvering mode if they want a dogfight. They, so not only that, uh, if you're shooting your weapons, this is another thing that I think should happen. As soon as you shoot your weapon, your ship should automatically switch to space combat maneuvering because it's intelligent enough to know that you are in a dogfight because you're firing your weapons. Or if you take hits, it should switch to space combat maneuvering. That way, you can interdict people. You can shoot them and keep them from quantuming away because it switches them to space combat maneuvering. That's just me throwing that out there. I don't know how it's going to work. We're going to see it in the PTU when we see the 2.6. We're going to make our suggestions after we get a chance to mess around with it. The evil Cadi, I'm, right sure, I'm sure, is already making suggestions. Whether they're good suggestions or not, there's a couple of them I think are not good suggestion makers, but that's okay. Let, let a bunch of us in PTU fix whatever the evil Cadi broke. Okay, so, but I need, when you're flying slow, there's supposed to be more of a dogfight feel, and that's what Chris Roberts wants. So I want to experience 2.6, and I want to do it with you guys. I want to fly 2.6 with the squadron. Maybe if we, even if we, even if we have to do Arena Commander Vandal Swarm, doesn't matter. If we get 2.6, I want to do some Star Marine. I want to do some dogfighting together with you guys, maybe even against you guys. Uh, we've had a lot of fun with that before in the past where we would dogfight each other and have our own internal tournament and that would be kind of cool and then okay when 3.0 comes out then we'll worry about missions and quantum fuel and carrying cargo and protecting people and just having a good time in the universe but 2.6 should be our opportunity to grind the mechanics Okay, what else did I want to talk about? Oh yeah, there's going to be some changes in, in Arena Commander, but that's no big deal. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to the squadron, I've seen a lot of good things happen from the squadron this last month. Uh, maybe it's from some of our newer members. Appreciate that. We got uh, Grub. He made our Facebook page, right? So if you, if you didn't know we had a Facebook page, we do. One NAS, or the First Naval Aerospace Squadron, has a Facebook page. Check it out. Become a, become a member of our Facebook page. Chat on it every now and then. No pressure. Facebook, I'm not really a big Facebook user, but I know a lot of people out there are, and so that's just another way to get our word out. Um, we got the forum post. As you can see right over there it's the second post there it says star citizen recruitment post every day click it it'll take you to our forum where we have it will take it to the star citizen RSI forum where we personally the one NAS has a recruitment thread click it it'll take you there type something in like hey we got discord or hey we got new signatures or hey you know we're, we're looking forward to 2.6 or whatever right put something there what that does is it takes our one NAS forum thread that's like on the fifth page and it puts it all the way up to the top puts it at the first post and then somebody else does theirs everybody else is bumping their threads and ours is going down 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 until the next person post something then it puts it back at the top so the more often that we post on that forum the more often will be the number one post top of the list 
And the reason why I want you to do that, guys, is because if you're a new player to Star Citizen, and there's a lot of new ones coming in right now because of the uh, free flies, the demos, 2.6 coming out soon. There's going to be a lot of new players, even the first person shooter guys, even if they don't fly, they might be looking for organizations to team up with. So what do they do? They go to the forums. They look at the organizations that are available. And they look at who's recruiting and what kind of forum posts they have. But you know how far deep into that forum thread do they go? Three, four, five pages at the most. If we get pushed beyond the fifth page, no one will ever see our recruitment page post. So let's bring it up to the first page. Every every day, bring it to the number one. Every hour, however long, whatever, whatever you can get a chance, click it. If you're not doing anything, click it. You know, just bring us up to the front. Okay, uh, what else? Yeah, our membership, uh, you know, oh yeah. Uh, you already know this, but I oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna rehash this a little bit. I did open up our squadron to affiliates. You can see the affiliate tab right there. And uh, if if somebody wants to be affiliated with the one NES, they can just apply to the squadron. And what I do is I check to see what their other squadrons are, what their other organizations are. If any of them are hidden or redacted, I deny them. I don't allow them in the squadron. If they have other squadrons that are visible, then I will check those squadrons by going to their personal websites and basically just checking them out, just checking out their members, see who's a member of that organization and what their philosophy is on how to play and stuff like that. If it's a pirate organization, or a intelligence organization, I do not accept them. They have to be completely 100% upfront and above board. Okay, if they are not, if they have anything hidden, denied. Okay, so that's me protecting our squadron. But I think that it's good to have affiliate members because maybe they're in a merchant organization, right? And they're a big merchant group. And they want to have affiliates with dogfighters or people that they can call upon when they need security. So then being an affiliate with us, it's like we're allies. It's like we're, we're part of the same team or whatever. And so they could call upon us. And then if we need something moved heavier than what we've got, we can always call them. You know, that kind of stuff. So so I don't, I don't see a problem with affiliates as long as they're up front up above board and they're good people they're not secretive sneaky bastards okay if they're pirates smugglers or just intel spooks they're not going to be in part of our affiliates okay uh what else what else what else um on the website yeah i've changed a few things on the website uh in the squadron roster you're going to see uh each squadron department on our in our organization has their own page okay these are all work in progress none of them have any information on them they are basically bare bones completely empty later on down the road when we fill these up or when we start to get more information about each of these i will add info to those okay field manuals we do you'll see it it goes by here real quick it says that we've got the saber flight manual is now in our field field manual you should check that out that's in our field manuals boot camp okay i got boot camp up there and it shows a graph a barcode a bar barcode it shows a graph of the different classes that we're going to conduct in boot camp I gave myself a ribbon for every class. Why? Just so you can see what the ribbons look like. Just so you can see the diff. because without the ribbon, it would, if nobody had a ribbon in that area, it wouldn't show up. So I wanted, so I basically, I, I basically made a, um, 
a placeholder for each of the ribbons across that shows everybody what ribbons you can obtain and those ribbons are things that are, we're not going to enforce boot camp and everybody everybody in the squadron that if that's been in for a while knows we're not going to enforce boot camp until we get much closer to beta like when they start it's going to be after 4.0 right when we hit 4.0 and the mechanics of the of the game are pretty much locked down even though the universe might not be built the mechanics of the game will pretty much be locked down that's when we're going to enforce boot camp okay so right now look forward to 4.0 being the big we're we're pushing to 4.0 when we get to 4.0 that's when the squadron comes alive with training and missions and things like that okay it's not gonna happen until after 4.0 3.0 just have fun enjoy yourself 2.6 let's get together and play a little and get on discord if you're not whoops wrong way if you're not on our discord shame on you get on the discord so and get the mobile app download it all right guys thanks for coming on checking out this video uh, remember this is every month uh, please recruit talk to your friends bring them on board um, Explain to them that they don't need anything but but a, a free ship, not a free ship, a, um, a smaller ship like the uh, $45 package. But do not fail them. When you're promoting Star Citizen, do not fail them by, not te by, by forgetting to tell them about Squadron 42. With a package, a $45 package, you can tag on an add-on for Squadron 42 for only $15. Okay, so for $60, which is the normal price, I got an itch on my head. <coughs> $60, which is normal price of any AAA game on the market, they can get Squadron 42 as well as a ship, an Aurora or a Mustang, and Star Citizen, okay? Don't just tell them to buy the, a ship and get Star Citizen. Because if you wait until Squadron 42 has already been released, then Squadron 42 is going to cost 60 bucks, and Star Citizen is going to cost 60 bucks, Right? So, yeah. Hook them up. Let them know. I've been thinking about buying a bunch of extra game packages. Just so I can give them to my friends for like Christmas or whatever. But, I'm, but I haven't done it. I probably should jump on that. But okay. Um, and that's about it. Okay, guys. You guys have a great day and I'll see you in the hangar.